I've got my harvest baskets. Let's go harvest some stuff from the garden before it rains here. You can't quite tell from this sky, but just around the corner of the house, there's a big rainstorm coming. So let's see how much we can get done. The limelight hydrangeas are looking really gorgeous. I love these hydrangeas. I have to show you guys these before we go over to the garden. Around the corner of the house here, you can see those big clouds coming. That's the thunderstorm. I can even hear the thunder kind of rolling in the distance. I think we have just a little bit of time here before it reaches us. So let's see how much we can get done. I at least want to try to get tomatoes harvested tonight and we might have to finish up harvesting other things in the morning, but I'm determined. Let's see what we can get done. The rooster's chasing the chickens over there. Maybe they hear the storm coming too. I'm trying a new method this year of bagging some of my dahlias because the Japanese beetles have been eating at the leaves and the petals and I don't want them to damage all the blooms. So we're trying that out. I just did a few of them there and a few dahlias here on the other side of the garden as well. The arch trellises are starting to fill in too. We'll harvest green beans later, but first let's go over to these tomatoes. I want to start with these big tomatoes first and then go on to the cherry tomatoes so that the big tomatoes aren't smashing the cherry tomatoes in the basket. There's definitely some stress on these plants and some disease issues going on here. I think this tomato variety is called Better Boy. This one's kind of crazy. It's grown inside the cattle panel and like started to go around this wire here. I'm probably gonna break it when I pull it out. Get it from the other side. I ripped it just now pulling it out. It was wedged inside one of the squares of the cattle panel. So I know that I did this, so I'll cut this one up as soon as we get into the house and that way it won't go bad on me. We can still use it. This one's really heavy too. There's some massive tomatoes out here that we're gonna be picking this evening. So I'm excited to see how much these weigh. We might have to put a few of them on the scale and see which one's the heaviest. I'm pretty sure this variety was Better Boy, but I'm not 100% positive because the tag washed off. Now, since it's gonna rain this evening, I'm gonna go ahead and pick some of these that are a little bit more just on the orange side of things, because I don't want them to crack in the rain. And we'll just let them continue to ripen in the kitchen. The next variety we're picking is Dr. Whitey's yellow tomato. This variety is supposed to be yellow, but it looks orange right now. So I'm not exactly sure why that is. The very first tomato I picked off of here was yellow. Did you guys hear those birds? There's some sunflowers here at the end of the row and there was two yellow finches sitting on one of the sunflowers right next to me. And then as soon as I started talking, it flew away. I hope they come back so I can film for you guys. They've been hanging around our bird feeders over by the house too, but they were so pretty. They were so close. They're not normally that close to me. Oh, it just came back. I'm gonna see if I can sneak over there and get closer to show you guys because it's so pretty. Oh. It flew away. The birds have really been loving all these sunflowers though. 
maybe it'll come back again. Those are so pretty. They're like a very vibrant, bright yellow with like black on them. I really like the yellow finches. I like watching birds in general. I enjoy having our bird feeders up. We have hummingbird feeder and a regular bird feeder uh, right next to the kids' sandbox. So while we're out there, it's fun to watch the birds. Anyway, back to Dr. Whitey's yellow tomatoes. There's quite a few big ones here that are ready to be picked. I also see some evidence of a tomato hornworm uh, around here. So we've got some caterpillars somewhere. So I'll have to keep my eye out for those while we're picking tomatoes today. These are the big ones. Looks like some caterpillar poop. That is a beautiful looking tomato though. I dropped it. Wow. Do you guys see the size of this green tomato down here? I don't think it shows justice on the camera, but that tomato is huge. I'm excited to see how much that one weighs when it's ready to be picked. It's a lot bigger than any of the ones we've picked so far today. I also just picked two of these white tomato varieties. This basket's really heavy. Might have to weigh the whole basket, see what we have. Quite the basket full of big tomatoes. Now let's go pick some cherry tomatoes. Actually, before we pick the cherry tomatoes, I wanna check some of our melons because I see a couple cantaloupe that look like they might be ready to harvest. And it also looks like there may be some butternut squash ready too. So let's check all that. The first cantaloupe, that one looks Pretty big right there. Let's check that one first. Last year we didn't really have that many successful cantaloupes. This one has a lot of webbing on it and it does smell sweet. So let's cut it open inside and see what it looks like. I'm hesitant to pull any more until I cut this one open just to compare and see if it actually is ready to be picked because I have not harvested enough cantaloupe to be able to tell exactly when they're ready uh, from experience. So it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error this summer, picking cantaloupe and seeing exactly when they're ready to be picked. But I've heard that the smell thing is a good thing to go by. So it smells sweet, it smells like a cantaloupe. So I'm hopeful, we'll see. <laughs> I'll show you guys what it looks like once I cut it in half and see if it was a flop or a win. Hopefully it's a win, because I really like cantaloupe, and that'd be a nice treat this evening. Now, there are a few other melons growing. Let me show you guys those. I'm not gonna pick them just yet, because like I said, I wanna check and see if that one's ready first. There's quite a few cantaloupe coming on, though. Most of these here on this trellis, I believe, are Sarah's Choice F1 Hybrid cantaloupe. I see some Kajari melon growing. Now, the Kajari melon, oh, they're covered in squash bugs. That's gross. The Kajari melon we grew last year. I waited until it looked a little bit orange to pick it. And that was good. I don't see any orange ones right now. I do see quite a lot of butternut squash though. The squash bugs are obviously destroying that plant, unfortunately. Next to our butternut squash, there are these cute little honey nut squashes. This one, I just touched it on the vine and it fell off. I've never grown honey nut squashes before, so I'm not sure exactly how big they're supposed to get. But looking at them, I assume if it falls off, it's ready. But then again, the squash bugs look like they have been attacking this plant too. So it may just be that squash bugs made it fall off. I don't know. We'll see when we cut it open. But you can see this plant right here is pretty much completely dead. There are some green looking honey nuts and then the much more orange ones down here and one of the orange ones is the one I picked up and then it fell off 
Now, I know for butternut squash, if you try to put your fingernail through it and it's tough and doesn't go through, it's ready. And that did not let my fingernail pierce it, so maybe it is ready. Oh, and that one came off pretty easy too. So we'll try those honey nut squashes. Some pretty big looking butternut squashes. I can't pierce it with my fingernail. There are squash bugs all over them. Nasty things. I just found one random red onion that we had obviously missed during harvest. We had harvested our red onions and yellow onions a few weeks ago, and this one seems perfectly fine. It was just lying on the ground. I guess it may have gotten dropped by one of the kids. The kids were helping us harvest that day too. I feel like I'm racing against the clock because that storm is getting closer for sure. Definitely probably have to finish up this video tomorrow, but in the meantime, let's pick some tomatoes. These are Tessa's Red Lace Current Tomatoes. They are just these little itty bitty, cute, adorable cherry tomatoes. I think they're really sweet and they just kind of burst in your mouth. And there's not a whole lot to them because they're so tiny. So it has more like skin to meat ratio, which I prefer a bit of a firmer tomato rather than just a beef steak every day. So I enjoy these a lot. I think they're really fun on salads and stuff and they look super cute. So let's pick a bunch of these. These are also pretty easy to pick, even though they're tiny. I just kind of take the vine and then hold it over the bowl and they kind of all fall in. If you run your fingers across the ready ones anyway. That is a comment I've gotten a few times on videos where I show these are that they must be a pain to pick because they're so tiny and there's so many of them. But if they're ready, they kind of just fall right off. Although it does make it kind of annoying because then they fall all on the ground. <laughs> if you don't have the bowl up underneath. We have a bunch of different tomato varieties. Some are just small, traditional red tomatoes. Then I also have a lot of these globe varieties. Here's some that are a little more ready to be picked. I believe these are mare globe tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the ones that even have a little bit of yellow still on them because the storm's coming. Hey, Pepper. These are Barry's Crazy Cherry Tomato. They're a yellow cherry tomato variety and they form in really big clusters. And they're very prolific. You can see it's just completely covered in yellow cherry tomatoes. My favorite cherry tomato is the Sun Gold. I've talked about it before, but they are so yummy and so sweet. Well, the wind is picking up quite a lot. I think I'm gonna go ahead and bring all this stuff inside and finish harvesting tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in like two seconds, which will be tomorrow for me, and just a couple seconds for you. Thanks to the joys of YouTube editing. The thunderstorm last night halted the harvesting, so I'm gonna be finishing up today. I just noticed that there are some of these cucamelons ready to be picked. These are also called Mexican sour gherkins. They taste kind of like a sour cucumber in my opinion but I think they're really cute. They look like a little watermelon. These ones in particular actually self-seeded themselves from last year. I had them growing last year on this arched cattle panel and they just seeded themselves. I did not start these. So it was a nice surprise to see that these were already growing in the garden this spring.
On the opposite side of the sour gherkins, I have some of these Chinese red noodle beans. These are really fun. I think they're such a unique color. They're like a dark maroon, uh, reddish purple color. And they taste kind of like a green bean. They are a little bit more uh, stringy or chewy than a green bean, I think. But we cook them up in like a stir fry or roasted with some other vegetables in the oven and you can't tell the difference. I think they're really pretty though, hanging down from this arched cattle panel. This front arch cattle panel, I should just call my volunteer cattle panel or something because the cucumelons self-seeded themselves and these long red noodle beans also self-seeded themselves from last year. I really like it whenever plants volunteer themselves in the garden and I don't have to plant them. It's pretty wild how big these are. I think that's pretty cool. And it's just a beautiful color. I also have some regular pole green beans growing on these arch cattle panels. Let me pick some of those to show you for size comparison. There's some right here next to them. So this is a normal green bean. And this is the red noodle bean. I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm gonna snack on some green beans while we do the rest of our harvesting. flowers are looking really pretty all along the edge of the garden. We'll have to pick a bouquet when we're all done harvesting the veggies. The leaves on the green bean plants all along these arched cattle panels behind me have been getting pretty eaten up by Japanese beetles, but hopefully the Japanese beetles are on their last leg and won't be around here for too much longer. Like growing the green beans on the arched cattle panel because I think it makes it a lot easier to see them and that way you can harvest them more efficiently. Plus I think it looks pretty. They haven't quite filled in all the way across the top but they should here in the coming weeks really take off and fill up. Hey Pepper! There's a dahlia growing here in the corner of this bed that's kind of flopping over. So I'm gonna grab a tomato cage and see if we can help support it up. It's really starting to get hot and muggy out here. I think it's supposed to be up to like 100 today and it's very humid here in Virginia. So I'm glad I'm harvesting everything here this morning versus in the hot of the day. I'm picking some cucumbers. I just went over and 
grabbed the wheelbarrow because these vines are covered. They've got some disease issues going on, but they're still producing tons of cucumbers. And there's a whole other plant on the other side that has a bunch too. I'm thankful for this drip irrigation, I'll tell you that. It has been very handy on these hot days. The drip system has been so nice on these hot days, uh, not to have to come out here and water the garden, especially with a new baby in the house. Uh, I am so thankful for that drip system, and that's something I'm definitely glad we took the time and invested in doing. The link to all the stuff we got for our drip system and how we installed it, and that video is all in the description box below this one if you want to check it out. We do earn a small commission if you shop through our link, but it's at no extra cost to you. So we appreciate it if you are planning on buying a drip system just to purchase it through our link. Thanks. Pepper always likes hanging out with me when I'm in the garden. Don't ya? This cucumber here is another example of one that grew in the cattle panel. It's kind of funny. It is the shape of the sea now. Let me show you guys up close. See, it just kind of wedged in between the cattle panel and the T post. It's kind of funny. Looks like the blackberries are starting to produce some nice looking berries. I think I'll let the kids come out and pick those later today though, because they always like picking blackberries. Our sweet corn is starting to tassel out, but it's nowhere near ready to pick yet. Um, the corn ears are still pretty skinny and the tassels are not yet that dark brown color. Next to our sweet corn, there's this beautiful foxglove growing Look how pretty those flowers are. Now, foxglove is toxic, so we're not gonna be eating that one, but it's pretty to look at. The squash bugs really did kill off this butternut squash vine. It's looking pretty rough. The squash still look pretty good on it though. There are quite a few honey nut squashes growing on this vine. Most of them are still green. I wanna wait till they get orange to pick them. I did pick a couple yesterday evening. However, I think I'm gonna let most of the rest of these uh, continue to mature on the vine. Hopefully the squash bugs don't completely kill back the plant before they have a chance to fully ripen. Oh look, another cucumber. See, there's a bunch more with green webbing on them still. I was just checking some of our other cantaloupe and melons and I barely picked this one up and it came off the vine. So I guess it's done. We'll see when we cut it open. I'll cut open this melon and the other one when we get back inside the house. It smells like a cantaloupe. So hopefully it's ready. I know one of them is only supposed to be like four inches across. So this would fit the bill for that. So I'm excited to cut it open. It's always fun to cut things like this open. There's a lot more smaller ones still growing, but I just kind of picked this one up just like that and it came right off. So I think it's ready. It's got a lot of webbing on it too. This pepper plate right here is called a lemon drop pepper. I've never tried this one before. From the name, it sounds kind of spicy to me. Um, but like I said, I've never tried it before. It's like a yellow, a bright yellow fruit. We'll see how it tastes. There's also a lot of jalapenos ready to be picked as well as some other pepper varieties. So let's get to picking peppers. These are the Kurbachi peppers. They're green and then they turn kind of yellow then red. Um, you can eat them at any stage though. I really like these. They're like a sweet bell pepper. We've got some jalapenos. 
I mean serrano peppers, not jalapenos. Our jalapenos are down the way here just a little bit. We have quite a few different pepper varieties. I'll probably just end up dehydrating most of these peppers and turning them into a pepper blend powder that we'll use in cooking. I've done this for the last several years and I really enjoy having like a multi-peppered flavored seasoning powder to use. I should probably try to separate these a little bit. Let's put the lemon drop on one side because I feel like that one might be kind of spicy. It's a very nice bush for the lemon drop. It's quite large. There's some more down here. Pretty. Sugar Rush peach peppers. got some paprika peppers and bell peppers. Some of the tomatillos are ready too. Ooh, dropping them. I'm going to cut a few of these hydrangea blossoms too. Some of these have flopped down on the ground just a little bit. inside because it's hot out here. I'll show you guys the complete harvest of everything we got and we'll also cut open those two melons to see if they're ready or not. We're back inside now. I have the harvest that we just did together all laid out on the table. We got a lot of stuff today so let's just go through it all and I'll show you guys everything we got one more time because I think it looks pretty cool. some really big uh, slicer tomatoes. This one got a little bit damaged, but it's still huge. I picked out the ones I think are probably the heaviest. So let's weigh them and see which one truly is the heaviest, because I think that's fine. This orange one, which I think is a Kellogg's breakfast or a Dr. White Cheese Yellow, uh, feels a lot like solid and heavier than this red one. So I'm gonna go with this one first. All right, let's see. This one's one pound, 8.2 ounces. All right, let's try this one. One pound, 14.3 ounces. All right, now I think this one's probably the biggest. So let's try this one next. Oh, yep, two pounds, 1.7 ounces. I showed you guys when I was harvesting last night uh, a really big green one that looked even bigger than this one. So I'll be sure to weigh that one and compare it to how big this one was. I think it's kind of fun to see what the biggest tomato of the season was. So over two pounds is the record to beat. Two melons here. I think this one is like a personal size melon. I have some that I planted that said they're only supposed to get four inches across. So we're gonna cut it open and see. I'm not an expert by any means on when it's time to pick cantaloupe. That's why I only harvested two today because I wanted to cut them and compare and see how mature they were before we harvested the rest. So let's cut this one first. Okay. Okay. I'd say that one's not quite ready. Um, let's taste it though and see. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be orange <laughs> and it's green. This one is the one that popped right off the vine when I picked it up. So I was thinking that maybe that was just a sign I was ready. It popped off the vine, so it needed to be harvested whether it was ready or not. It tastes kind of like a cucumber and not a melon. Let's try the bigger one. 
Yeah. Okay, let's try this one. All right, moment of truth. Ready? Hey, that looks a lot more like a melon. I think it probably still could have gone a little bit longer because that's quite a bit of green around the edges, but let's see how it tastes. We've got orange color though. That's a improvement from the last one. Okay, that tastes pretty good. I think it could be a little sweeter and softer though. So I'm glad I didn't harvest the rest of them and that I only harvested two. You'll have to come back another day and see us harvest the rest of them and we'll try again. Again, my name's Kara. Thanks for hanging out with me as I harvested today. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more from our channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, bye y'all.